Uh, so I'm Don, I'm an upcoming sophomore. I'm in the school of CS Coney. My name is Min Hyuk Choi, and I am a junior at UCI, and I'm a computer science major. Hi, my name is Luke. I'm a recent graduate from UC Irvine in 2023. I'm a software engineer at Cisco now. So I'm Kevin. I graduated from UCI. I was class of 2018. I interned at a company called Aveta, and that's where I am today as a senior DevOps engineer. I think for beginning CS classes, I think you should really look out for the 30 series. Those 31, 32, and 33, those are all Python-based classes, and usually you get a lot of fundamentals from that class. I see 33 is where you really learn about how Python itself works. You learn about just the core like structure of it and how everything like works, and you can kind of make anything with the tools that Python gives you, and so I thought that was pretty interesting. A lot of people often say that 33 is the hardest class freshman year, but what I found is I'm often helping people more in ICS 32. The hardest class for me was 32 because I fell behind on my work. What I find is a lot of people go into 32 after taking 31, and they think that 31 is really easy, and so they, they assume that 32 will be easy too. Uh, the professor gave us a lot of time to do each lab, but uh, I overestimated my competency on the labs and I ended up doing them last minute, which was a huge burden. And then they procrastinate a lot and then suddenly they have these really hard assignments that they can't finish and then I have to stay up multiple nights to help them with them. <laughs> the closest to the deadline I finished uh, ICS32 lab was, I think I finished it about two minutes before the deadline. It was around, um, I think 11.58 I finished the assignment and turned it in. I've helped at least a dozen people in 32. I think total, like, I've probably spent like maybe like 50 hours helping people with their assignments that weren't mine. I think for most incoming CS students, the classes that you would be looking for are pretty standard for lower div at least. You can stay in the general classes and then not have too much to put in your resume but to start taking some of the more specialized project classes. A class that a lot of people often talk about is CompSci 122B. And that class is notorious because you build an entire website from scratch. That's a lot of work. And so uh, it teaches you a lot about front-end development, back-end development. People often experience a lot, of, a lot of struggle doing that because it's just a lot of work overall, but uh, they, they often come out of it learning a lot. ICS 119, I'm not sure exactly the code, but that's where outside companies can come in and they'll actually have programs or projects for the students to work on so that'll help you stand out from the rest of the CS students. I think another class that I found really interesting was uh, CompSci 178. That class is about machine learning. Everyone is talking about AI nowadays, ChatGPT. 178 is where you get to see how that actually works internally. What you find is it's a lot of math and a lot of math. <laughs> so the compilers course is a required course for CSE, almost 100% in machine language, um, assembly code and it's just very difficult and not really worth, if you're going to think about working in stuff like Python or C++, that kind of stuff is not really relevant to what you'll be doing. Course code CS142, I think, and Clefstad taught it when I was there. A really easy class that I took was uh, CS145, which is Embedded Systems. You know, usually you're just working with software the whole time and you're not a computer engineer, you're a computer scientist and so, Mostly you're just coding, but uh, CS 145 is is where you actually deal with a little microchip. It is frustrating when your hardware doesn't work because there's no debugger. You, you have no idea what's going wrong, but it's really cool to see um, the code that you write actually have like a, a physical impact on the world. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Python program uh, and it's just a basic uh, GUI tic-tac-toe I made back in fall quarter of this year. And so the two main part about this projects was that one it uses sockets so technically i could i could do this on two different computers we will be able to see that uh, you can input an ip address and a port for both of them so if i put local host and i put one two three four five for both of them it should uh put me in i'll just put the name so here's the first one and here's the second one and so if i was a good programmer this should work properly yeah there you go so the project is called the to-do list app. We're just making a better version of a to-do list that 
mostly fits our needs. A lot of the to-do list apps that we've been finding nowadays, uh, it's been requiring like monthly subscriptions. It uses Tailwind to use these kind of fonts to have the background, um, this different kind of text using different headers. We're gonna replace this section right here with a input so we can add a title and a de description text and a status. We're gonna be creating multiple of these cards that are gonna be placed around so that we can have like a to-do list. Uh, let me show you uh, an app I wrote called Zot Search. If you look here on the website, it's just a course search engine where you can look at different uh, courses at UCI. You could do things like filter by uh, which GE category it satisfies. So let's say you wanna find a class that satisfies GE category three. To be honest, the website's pretty buggy still and it's because I wrote it in a week and it's a couple thousand lines. But one of the nice features is that you can actually sort by the average GPA of that course. So if you want to sort by the average GPA, you, you just uh, change the filters like so. And then by the time, you know, when you look at the courses here, uh, you can see which courses have the highest uh, average GPA for uh, GE Category 2. This app was sort of sitting in my brain for for months. A week before I graduated, I finally found a pocket of time and I decided um, I'm just gonna build this app. And I cranked it out in like a couple of nights. I wrote it in such a way that it updates itself every quarter. So all this is running for free and now I don't have to worry about it ever again. I can't show you any recent projects, but I can talk through it a little bit. One of the projects that I worked on recently was I had to migrate one of our applications from an older version of Kubernetes to a newer version of Kubernetes. That meant having to have the old cluster and the new cluster working in tandem, in parallel, making sure they were both working. So that was a lot of work and having to keep this one up and not touched, but having to code out what the new cluster would look like and having our automation created, getting the code running on there, testing it to make sure it was working. And then we're able to make that change pretty seamlessly actually. So it's pretty cool the kind of stuff you can do in the cloud. Say definitely if you're thinking about going to UCI, but one thing that's stopping you is you didn't come in, you're not coming into your major. I say it's definitely still go for it. As long as you work hard enough for it, you can definitely get your major. Um, one tip I would give for incoming students, I think it's really important to have a, a friend group that you can really rely on. I think these projects and these um, labs that you're going to be doing in those ICS classes are pretty um, demanding of your time and to do them with other people and just to think through your ideas with other people I think is really helpful because um, I had to do that for a lot of my labs and that's how we were able to get through those classes together. So I really recommend getting a group of friends that are also on the same track as you, just going the same path. That way you can really help each other understand the material better but also uh, just understand the lab requirements better. I think the biggest piece of advice I would give an incoming CS major would just be don't be afraid to ask for help. I think CS majors are typically pretty prideful and they think they, they can do all their projects by themselves. I definitely, I definitely did that. I think the other piece of advice is that you don't have to love it or be passionate about it. I think that's some of the stereotype, but I think as long as you are on the side of the spectrum of you like it rather than dislike it, I think it's worth sticking through because I guess career that ends up being is one that has, it leaves you with bandwidth and capacity to be passionate about other things as well. As for me, I think having a software engineering job actually gives me a lot of flexibility to do what I actually want to do outside of work, which is college ministry. And that gives me opportunity to mentor college students and help them not only in their classes, but also grow spiritually and, you know, seek after truth and find a lot of a lot more joy doing that than actually doing it in my work. Yeah, it's pretty surprising because, you know, I, I clearly love CS a lot. But I think that that, that joy is, is only goes so far. And I think the joy of you know, helping people and, and, and doing college ministry and showing people um, you know, what Christianity is, I think that joy goes way higher. You know, put in the hours and do the work, but you know, it'll be okay. You know, that's not all that there is about college. You know, I really encourage you to uh, really pour into the kind of friendships that you'll make here, the kind of interests and, and being able to figure out just who you are as a person, you know, what are you going to be about? You know, what is your identity? What are you going to believe in? You know, there are people out there that can help you with that. People who have done what you're going through right now, um, either recently or a longer time ago. Yeah, 
I think that's something I really want to encourage people to do. You know, take advantage of what college has and that'll be the thing that you really are thankful for looking back. If you need help in computer science, I'm fully down to help you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at LukeRenChinese. Yes, shameless plug. Or <laughs> uh, you can find me at uh, any A2F event.